deans here at the Hart School overseeing admission, pre-college, and continuing education. And on behalf of all of us at the University of Hartford and the Hart School, uh, welcome to today's uh, virtual session. We, of course, would love to be having these discussions with you in person. Uh, COVID-19 and our, our, our globe have some other plans for us, but we're delighted to be uh, able to offer you some insights, help answer some questions, and get to know you a little bit better here in this uh, virtual setting. So today, the name of the game is really organic, um, a lot of fun. We want to be informative, ask great questions, right, and be responsive to all of you. Um, and as accepted students, I think the first step for us here is to congratulate you again on your acceptance to the University of Hartford and the Hart School. Uh, we're so excited uh, for the opportunity to welcome you to our community of artists. And a number of you, as I can see, are, are already deposited. So uh, again, welcome. Congrats again. We're really excited to have you here at the Hart School. Uh, we're going to go through uh, some brief introductions and, uh, and then we're going to get started. If you are an attendee, you'll see over on the right hand side of your screen, there is a Q&A box there, also a chat. Uh, you're welcome to drop questions in there and we'll take them as they come along. I do try to lump a few questions together and, and try to steer the conversation in a way that allows our panelists to, um, to be uh, well engaged. So if I don't get your question right away, I promise I'll come back. Uh, on, the, on the second pass for it. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and get started. If every panelist could just uh, give your name, uh, your title, if you're a student, uh, you know, what your degree program is and, uh, and your year uh, would be great. And uh, I think perhaps most importantly, what you love most about the Hart School. And so uh, we'll kind of go in screen order here, if that's all right. And, and Tracy, do you want to lead us off? Oh, first. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm so sorry we're not able to meet you in person this time because it's always one of the really fun parts of the job is meeting all these people and then they come to the school and we watch them grow up over their time that they're with us. Um, so I'm Tracy Rudnick. I am the head of the Allen Library and that is our music library. And Noah, so we come back. Oh, you want to know what we love most about the Hart School. All right. Well, two things. First of all, one of the things I love about Hart is that it has the substance and the talent to support really excellent programs and offer a lot of valuable experiences. But at the same time, we're also small enough and intimate enough to really care about the students and give out a lot of attention. That's something that impressed me in my job interviews and I've been here for 10 years. And as for our music library, I love that we have enough resources to meet a variety of needs. I am really happy that students love our brand new facility. But mostly, I love how many students and faculty consider our library to be their own special library. They know that we're here for them. That's thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Tracy. We look forward to hearing a little bit more about the library and some of the, you know, outside the studio academic resources that are available to our students. And I know we have Gabe Herman, uh, who uh, should be along here shortly to talk a little bit about some of the other resources that are available to students. Um, but uh, but we'll, we'll we'll keep working on the line here. Crystal, do you want to go next? Sure. I'm Dr. Crystal Klingenberg, and I'm an ethnomusicologist based in our music history department. And one one thing I love most about Hart, there are many things, but just how passionate everybody is, and that that goes from the students, the profs. Uh, you know, we're all so passionate about what we're doing, and that really shows in the in the product at the end. Um, yeah. So I look forward to to meeting you all. Thanks, Crystal. Very nice to have you here. Uh, let's see, Robin. Hi, guys. My name is Robin. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at University of Hartford. So I'm the liaison between the admissions department and the Hart School. Um, so I take care of all of your academic evaluations. I'm going to kind of be in the background here. So if you have any questions that are not heart related, something maybe regarding housing or dining or anything like that, feel free to put it in the, the Q&A section and I will get to it. Great. Thank you so much, Robin. And we've had a great, a great time getting to know each other. Robin and I, this is our first year working together and uh, she's really exceptional and is here to help all of our students uh, along this, uh, their application process. So she's got lots, lots and lots of good information. So be sure to ask those questions straight away. Danielle, you want to take it away? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Danielle Kendall and I'm actually a graduate student at the Hart School right now. So I'm just finishing up my first year as an artist diploma in tuba. And I finished my master's last year at the Hart School also, 
Um, and I was having such a great experience that I decided to come back for the artist diploma and it's been fantastic. Um, one of my favorite things about the Heart School is the faculty and how they just have such individualized instruction and that you can walk up to any faculty member in the hallway and they're always willing to help you. Anybody, it's such a friendly atmosphere and we still get such a high quality of music too. Like the performance opportunities are endless and the faculty will get you to where you want to go. Thank you, Danielle. And, uh, you know, recognizing that uh, a majority of our attendees today are undergraduate students. Um, Danielle is, is so deeply involved in our school in so many different ways um, and is really um, pretty influential in terms of getting groups together and collaborating and, and otherwise. So I, I thought you could offer a, a wonderful perspective um, of also how graduate and undergrads interact. Um, which is an important component uh, that I'm sure we'll dive into in some detail here today. Uh, last and certainly not least, Glenn. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Glenn Adjit. I'm the director of bands here at the Hart School. And uh, in addition to um, directing those ensembles, I also conduct our foot in the door ensemble, which I'll I'll do a little uh, preview for. This is our foot in the door <laughs> ensemble. That's my advertising. Um, there are new music ensemble that uh, is a terrific um, ensemble at the school. Um, what do I love about Heart the most? I well, no, did we have like an hour and a half? <laughs> so I just I could go on, um, but I won't go on too much. Other than to say, one of the things that I really um, like about the school is the diversity. The diversity of 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 who we bring together. We bring artists together. We bring musicians together, we bring dancers together, we bring theater majors together, um, we bring engineers together, um, music educators together. The, the diversity of our majors is one of our strengths. Um, and the, the through line through all of that is the performance aspect of everything. Um, all of the people that are invited to, um, to come to the school that are accepted uh, have to be terrific at what they do. Um, they have to be a terrific performer in addition to being a terrific engineer. Um, you're not going to be a great engineer, as Gabe will tell us shortly, uh, unless you're a really terrific musician. All of that sort of goes hand in hand. Um, and that's what I love. And what that means is that as a student, and maybe we'll talk more about this later, um, from an ensemble standpoint, um, from a performance standpoint, you're engaged in ways that are truly unique to other institutions. It's one of the things that sets us apart. Uh, from other institutions um, that, that, you know, uh, are performing arts institutions. And I can certainly talk more about that later, but um, that's one of the really exciting things that that I every year look forward to, which is our, our performance calendar and the kinds of things that we're able to do that not a lot of places can. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think to maybe, uh, thanks, Glenn, for that. And thanks again to all of our panelists for making themselves uh, available today to talk uh, with, with these accepted students. Um, again, there's a Q&A box there, so again, drop in those questions as they come in and we'll, we'll work them into our discussion. Um, I think probably next up would be a great opportunity to elaborate a bit more on things outside the studio. And we use the sort of air quotes of outside the studio only in that we know so much of your time as a, as a musician is to be spent working in your private lesson and uh, within uh, your, your coursework practicing, right, your large ensembles and otherwise, but what are the things that happen within the heart school outside of, of that course of study? And I think this is a great kind of opportunity for Crystal and Tracy to, to weigh in on that. But uh, Crystal, you want to lead us off? Sure. So just a little bit more about what I do at the heart school. I mentioned that I'm an ethnomusicologist, which means I study music and culture. And so my research is on um, the mainstream popular music of Uganda. This is what I research and write on. This is, I go to Uganda to do field work. But my academic interests in terms of the lar kind of larger picture and what I teach are global black popular musics. And at the Heart School, I teach world music survey. I teach about um, African-American popular music, African popular music. I teach um, on the graduate level, I'm teaching research and writing as well. So. I, I, you know, put all of my my interest and my passion in these topics into this, these courses uh, for undergrads, and you can take these courses with me. At some point, you will take 
some music history classes and there are some that are, are more along the lines of what you might expect in terms we have like a big uh, a music history survey that most people are going to take at some point or another. Um, what I teach is a little bit different from that and I'm here to kind of uh, broaden your global horizons of the kinds of music that you listen to and that might impact you as a performer or a composer. That's great. Thank you so much for that. And there's lots of opportunities like that, lots of incredible courses, lots of great opportunities to expand your knowledge base here at the Hart School. And, uh, and that's another exciting element about, um, about our programming. Tracy, do you have some things you want to add about uh, things outside the studio or other resources that are available to our students? Sure, I'd be glad to. So in the Allen Music Library, it's a beautiful facility. Students love to congregate there um, to do their quiet study or meet up with faculty or each other, do group study. But we also have about 90,000 items in that library that's devoted to music and dance. That's musical scores, parts, books about music, along with recordings and online resources. And these are things that you're not finding for free on the internet. It's not all out there. Um, these are things that we are paying for as part of the institution. And that's something that you then have access to once you're here. And we also teach you how to find these resources because you're going to need them for your lessons, your ensembles, your classes. Sometimes you might be writing research papers or doing web projects. Uh, sometimes you might need to be putting together audition materials, you know, for say maybe um, summer camps that you want to teach music at or go to. Uh, we have portable recording equipment. So we basically have the resources you need to support a lot of the endeavors. Uh, that you will be making and then we have people that's one of our most important resources we have several staff there who have degrees in the performing arts we know what it's like to be a music student we know some of the challenges we get to know people by name people come by when they graduate and they say thank you for everything you really helped me with my studies and to navigate these things so that's what we're here for and that's really one of the best parts of the job is getting people connected to the right resource at the right time Wonderful. Thank you, Tracy, for that very much. So, um, Glenn, I wonder uh, if you could talk a little bit about um, your interactions with our music education students. Uh, you know, how 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 does the ensemble program interface with that student population? If you can talk a little bit about your knowledge of uh, sort of the private lessons that go on within that and uh, the applied faculty on that side of things. And then we can kind of work our way into a few of our questions that are coming in through the Q&A box here about about music education sure of course um so first of all i mean that's my background right so i uh my first job was a junior high band director in michigan and my second job was a high school band director in michigan and and those are my roots um so i have a really special kinship with with our music ed majors because um it's it's a it's a challenging world and uh it's such a rewarding world um to be in the teaching uh profession um, Warren Haston is our one of our instrumental uh, music education professors, and he's simply the best. He's great. Um, if you want to be a teacher, you're going to spend some time with him, and you're going to learn to be a teacher in a really special way. Um, uh, he's a fantastic pedagogue and human being. So um, my interaction with you is is mainly through ensembles uh, and helping to prepare you for um, what eventually will be leading large ensembles, um, whether they be elementary school all the way up through um, you know, high school age. Uh, and that's an important part of your training. And so um, through the ensemble experience, uh, we, we really do take the time to, to try and unfold for you the way in which uh, pedagogy works in that environment. Um, and that's something that's really important uh, that, that you get uh, as a as an educator here, um, and and uh, like I said, the thing that I really like the most uh, about the ensembles is is that when I look in front of the students in my ensemble, I very rarely know what their majors are um, because they're all just really terrific players, um, and that's one of the things that I like about it. And then as I learn uh, and take a deeper dive into the new students, I begin to figure out who's what major and and uh, what which part of the school that you belong to. But at first, it's just a group of really fantastic musicians that are getting together um, making music uh, in, in what is a pretty unique setup for our ensembles. 
Great. Thank you, Glenn. Um, one of the other uh, music ed questions that came was really talking about what the first year looks like for a music education student. Now, it's no, it's no secret that music education is perhaps one of our more rigorous degree programs simply because of the education component plus the performance component right on top of it. And it, it is rather robust. So any, any tips, tricks, any thoughts about that first year? And I you know, Daniel, yeah. I know you went through it too. Yeah, so let me, let me just tell you a, a little bit about what I, why I like our music ed program so much. Um, it is hands-on from day one. Um, so there are a lot of places where you don't interact with real kids uh, in a, an educational environment until your senior year when you go out and spend a semester student teaching. Uh, and then you're just sort of, as they say, thrown to the wolves uh, and you, you are out student teaching trying to make your way. Um, one of the things that's built into our curriculum here is, is very uh, uh, stepwise contact with students. It happens, in the, uh, it happens from semester one. Uh, so when you are a freshman and you go home for um, your winter break, you spend a good part of that winter break in January with your teacher uh, in their school, living with them for a couple of weeks, getting their schedule and following them and shadowing them and just sort of figuring out what it is to be a teacher on the other side of the music stand, right, than, than you've been before. And then each, each year then layers more experience on top of that so that eventually you're maybe going to our magnet school on campus and you're actually teaching lessons to elementary school. Um, and so by the time you're, you're student teaching, uh, you've been prepared in a way uh, that allows you to, to still be overwhelmed because it's always an overwhelming experience, but to be prepared to be overwhelmed uh, and, and to be able to learn the most. Um, and that, that really is a really valuable aspect of our music ed program that again, I think sets us apart from many other places because of the real experience, um, going out to the schools on a regular basis and uh, watching teachers teach and then and then getting up yourself and, and taking a, a shot at it. It's um, it's really valuable field work. Awesome. That's a great, very comprehensive uh, answer. Thank you, Glenn. Um, Danielle, do you have anything that you you may want to add as uh, someone who had an undergraduate experience in music ed, not at heart? Um, but coming to, you know, the sort of to our school as a recent music ed alum. Yeah, so um, I, I did my undergrad at a different school um, in New York and it was in music education. Um, so when I got to heart and I saw the and became friends with a lot of the undergraduate music ed students, um, one of the things that I thought was so special was the way that they teach you how to teach. Um, not in a sense to where they're only teaching you how to pass the certification exams. So when you're done at heart with your undergrad, you will be certified in Connecticut for, um, for teaching in the state of Connecticut. Um, and you have this thing called EdTPA, and they're going to prepare you to take those certification exams. So they will show you how to do it. You're going to be successful at that. Um, they give you all the tools for that, but there's so much more to teaching than just passing those certification exams. And with all of the field teaching that um, Professor Edsett talked about, you get to experience all of it and you're prepared um, in a way that um, in, in my undergrad, I felt like I was ready to take the test and then I got into real life <laughs> and it was a little bit different than the test. <laughs> so, so heart was very special, is special in that way. Thank you, Danielle. And I, I we have to, change course just ever so slightly because we one of our panelists is now here. Uh, Gabe Herman, thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. I understand we had a little technology uh, challenge there, but uh, but welcome nonetheless. Uh, we, we have to we have to send you all the way back to the beginning and um, <laughs> just give us your name, your title, what what you're doing here. And uh, we have to say one one thing you love about the heart school. And then right after that, there's actually a question in our Q&A that I think lends itself pretty well to uh, to your area of uh, expertise. And that's um, talking about opportunities for students to learn other areas and music production, uh, you know, outside of their majors or otherwise. Oh, you're muted. I think we got to unmute you here. How about now? Perfect. Okay. 
Great. Well, uh, so glad for everybody tuning in today. Uh, my name is Gabe Herman. I'm assistant professor of music industry at the Hart School. Uh, I teach classes in music production and technology, and I also teach in the music management and performing arts management departments. Um, the one thing that I really love about the Hart School, uh, there's not one, there's all of the things. Um, I, I think the thing that's really the, the best is the students. Uh, when I first started uh, teaching at Hart back in 2005, I actually lived in Boston and I drove two and a half hours from Boston down to Hart to teach as an adjunct um, twice a week. And I kept coming back year after year because I liked the students so much. And uh, I was also teaching part time at BU. And uh, uh, the more uh, I got to see life outside of Hart and you know what that was like compared to how special the Hart School was, the more it just drew me uh, further in. Uh, so the musicianship is high. The artistic standards are high. Um, the students are funny. They have a sense of humor. They welcome and uh, appreciate each other's strengths um, and also encourage uh, growth amongst each other. Um, the, uh, the, the, it's the only place I've ever been where I sat in on an orchestra rehearsal and when someone did a really outstanding solo in the rehearsal, uh, the ensemble applauded for them, even though it wasn't even, you know, the audience is each other and they really encourage each other. And that's a really special thing. So. Um, I'm really happy to be at heart. Absolutely wonderful. Um, so the, the question of what opportunities are there for MPT, if you are not an MPT major, we offer two classes in the music production and technology department. There's sound technology one and sound technology two. The first is um, a class that is a survey of all of the areas of the recording studio. So you have a chance to learn the language, the tools, um, a little bit about microphones, a little bit about acoustics. Um, and a little bit about the effects and uh, the special things that go into making a recording session happen uh, from a theoretical perspective. And then we have a follow up course, which is the Sound Tech 2 class, where we actually run recording sessions and students get a hands on experience um, doing recording sessions in class with the faculty. Um, and that uh, ranges everywhere from a, a, just a simple two channel stereo recording of a single instrument to um, a full blown multi track session of a uh, a, a song. Usually, we we try to find a, a pop song. Uh, students choose a, a pop song of their their liking, and we recreate the entire song from scratch, uh, one part at a time, uh, with musicians from Heart, um, student musicians. And it's a great chance to just sort of learn about how the studio works uh, from a practical perspective. Um, so there's lots of other ways you can be involved. The recording studio is kind of the central nervous system of the Heart School. Um, if you're a Heart student, generally speaking, you're going to find your way in there once a year. To record something for some reason, um, or you're going to be working with our students on their projects. So um, we're, we're pretty well integrated into the whole uh, life force of the school. Thank you for that. You actually, it's a wonderful segue. You sort of hit on this, this idea and Glenn has done, uh, done so and Danielle as well. And from an academic standpoint, both Tracy and Chris, you know, it, it's, it's just so clear that everything that we do at heart is geared towards collaboration and connecting with other humans right and making art and being creative with one another um, and sharing so uh, I, I think this is a really great opportunity for us to talk a little bit about some of the maybe as a, an example each of some of the really wonderful collaborative opportunities that you've been a part of um, with students uh, that has been really influential to the, the trajectory of every student's Process. So Glenn, you want to you want to lead off on? I saw that. Yeah, I want to yeah. go because I, I I also have to tell everybody I I will sorry that I have to bow out a little bit early because uh, as we speak right now the I am uh, with my colleague Edward Cumming, my other conducting colleague. We're we're teaching our IPO and we're talking about Beethoven Seven and the word Amsterdam. Uh, so those of you that don't know Beethoven Seven, go listen and then think Amsterdam and you'll know what we're talking about. Um, so I will have to bow out to start my next session at 3.30. But um, yeah, I, you know, the, one of the things that I love about conducting the ensembles at heart is just the sort of um, collaborations that we do. So um, with my foot in the door hat on for a second, we uh, have been to um, Iceland. Uh, we have toured uh, Iceland a few years ago with new music and played at a Dark Music Days festival. Uh, which was a big, huge invitation that we received as a new music ensemble to go uh, to Iceland and perform in Reykjavik uh, at the Harpa. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, last year at this time, um, we were invited to perform at the College Band Directors National Association Convention in Tempe, Arizona, um, which was a really big deal. 
Um, in addition, we have put out with uh, Mr. Gabe Herman, um, we have now uh, put out four CDs, four recordings, I don't even know they're called CDs anymore, um, on uh, Naxos Records. So those of you that want to go to Spotify, that want to go to Apple Music, that want to go to YouTube, you can hear all of our recordings on Axos uh, just by uh, reaching the, the Heart Wind Ensemble um, or Foot in the Door uh, website, and you'll you'll hear our recordings, um, which were all done in house. Um, Gabe has been a producer on all of those, and um, they have really received national acclaim for not only their performing but also their production value. So um, those are the kind of collaborative things that we're doing. We're out of our halls quite frequently. Uh, we are traveling, we are making records, and in addition, we are bringing in some of the world's greatest artists to play with us and to, to conduct with us. So um, th those are, are just a normal part of what we do. They're not special. They're just what we do and what we want to do every year. Um, and I, boy, I would have to have another hour and a half to talk about all the collaborations with music and theater and opera and dance and vocal studies that we do because um, it's just a normal part of our year. Yeah, we, we did get one specific question, Glenn, if I could ask you to tailor sure. one, just about um, opportunities between jazz and the non-jazz sort of disciplines within heart and, and collaboration there. Yeah, so we have a, we have a big band um, that's open to everybody to audition for. Um, and it's your typical 20 piece big band uh, run by Chris Casey, who's just brilliant. And um, that is, uh, available to you know any student um, at the Hart School to audition for. Uh, and I know that you know in addition to that, um, it's usually Wednesdays, but uh, there's any number of combos that are all pickup groups uh, that happen at night quite late in most of the large rooms where kids just get together and want to play. And that includes a lot of the classical instrumentalists uh, that are are you know interested in that side that side of, as they say, the horn as well. That's fantastic. And of course, collage, which is enormous, right? <laughs> That's the yeah, is our uber is collaborative our, event. <laughs> the peak of collaboration in the in the hard school, for sure. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Tracy and, and Crystal, from an academic standpoint, academic collaboration standpoint, uh, anything you'd like to add in? I have a bit of something, but I'll let Crystal go first. Up there, she's up. Okay, you know, no, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll be very quick. So I haven't been in the mix, but so long, but I will say that, you know, I am very open. And when it comes to the final projects for my, um, for my students, I want, I want my students to follow their interest in the framework of our topic and really dig into that which interests them within kind of the domain of our study. And so what the most recent time that I taught my um, black pop music class, one of my students did their final project on the um, late hip hop producer Jay Dilla and being so interested in Jay Dilla and his like the history of his work and his particular aesthetic decided to make his own track and sample in the style of Dilla as part and it wasn't meant to be part of the final project but he's like hey prof I did this I'm like that needs to be part of your final presentation we all want to hear it and we enjoyed it so much that his colleagues didn't actually realize that it was him they just thought he got it so it was just a Dilla track from someplace so we were all really excited from him on the subject of like supporting each other and so I in my classroom I try to be as open as I can about where students are coming from and what they want to work on and making sure that bet between us we can negotiate something that works for them for their final project so they can really dig into their intellectual interests. And that's uh, before I uh, turn over to Tracy, that's a really um, good segue. There's a question about minor um, and minoring uh, in, you know, across campus and otherwise. So uh, just as a quick touch point, um, the the diversity of programming and courses and the availability of minors is something that um, is actually very robust at the University of Hartford and the Hart School is one of, of seven colleges on the campus. So there's lots of opportunities to be doing minors um, in other areas of the university, you know, the Barney Business School, Hartford Art School, you know, et cetera. There's there's lots of opportunity on that front. So uh, I think that does answer sort of one of the one of the other questions. And, and you made me think about it, Crystal, because that sort of exploration of what a student really wants to get to in some ways, 
the sort of complement of a minor does allow folks to sort of drive their own academic uh, vehicle. Um, so we're, we're excited about that here at the university as well. But Tracy, off to you. Sure, actually, I'm glad we had you go first, Crystal, because everything I say builds on that, that in our library, we have a lot of materials um, in paper book format, but also online that helps people pursue their own interests, maybe things that are not covered in the curriculum, but they would want to know how to do or need to know how to do, or that builds upon what they're just getting an intro to, or, or maybe they're going in depth. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of um, the piece about collaboration people don't think about is um, what people are doing on their own. So, you know, we provide spaces, we provide rooms for meeting. We often buy materials for groups that are doing collaborative projects, whether it's inside of class or outside of class. You know, some students will come to me and say, hey, what can you pick up for us? And then those materials are there for whoever comes after them as well. Um, and then some of them happens um, in the classes when they come to me. People don't think about the intellectual collaborative collaboration portions like for example I had the trumpet studio come and see me and at first you know some of the students were a little bit resistant oh we know how to use the library we learned how to use the library and I said no 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 come anyway and so they showed up and I had piles of materials out for them and they just dug in I gave them some leading questions and then I said talk open the book, spend three minutes, now talk about what you're seeing. And they told stories about their experiences and how could I have used this? And, oh, I'm going to want to run a studio when I graduate. And here's a book on how to run a studio. Or, oh, I've had this injury problem. Oh, here's a book on how to deal with medical injuring, injuries of performing artists. And just the sharing of experiences and saying, hey, Tracy, did you know this book is out there? Could we get it too? Like, yeah, okay, we have the money to do this. And um, it's the sharing of information. It's the, the older students helping the younger students and getting them connected with resources. So it's not just performing collaboration, but it's also the collaboration of the networking and the sharing knowledge and the mentoring and supporting and bringing all those things together into one place. Awesome. Thank you, Tracy, very much for that. And Crystal, of course, as well. Danielle, uh, would you mind talking a little bit about collaboration between grads and undergrads? and how, uh, how that all fits together within our school. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as the actual courses that you're going to take, there's not as many that you can take with graduates and undergrads. There's different um, levels of like ear training and history and, and theory and things like that. But where you see the most collaboration is in the performing side of it. So in the large ensembles, the IPOs um, that Professor Etzit runs, it's graduates and undergraduates all combined together. And the seating placements every semester is is everyone. So you could be sitting next to a doctoral student as a freshman playing right alongside them. And it, it's really cool because it gives um, us older students a chance to mentor the, the younger students and, and kind of show you guys the ropes on, on how things work. And, and we constantly learn from the younger students um, just just new things that are happening, things that that we had no idea of, like I had no idea that TikTok was a thing and that I you could put music out on that until a younger student showed that, oh yeah, people are putting music out through TikTok. Like, well, that's kind of cool. So um we, we learn stuff from each other all the time. And in the chamber music um aspect, which is kind of the, the niche that I found myself in at the Heart School, and I'm really grateful for that you can collaborate with anyone. So I'm in um, a brass quintet, and that is currently graduate students. Um, I'm in a tuba euphonium quartet, which is undergrads and graduates. Um, I play in a tuba euphonium ensemble. I've played tuba and percussion, like all, all sorts of things. I mean, you can do any sort of collaboration across any instruments. Um, and going back to the, the cross discipline, um, one of my favorite things is collaborating with the composition students. And having the opportunity to have um, perform their works. Um, there's usually a concert every year that um, the composition students get assigned a chamber group and they'll write for that group and you get to work alongside them. They come into your rehearsals and, and you can talk about, well, what did you mean about this? Or, and, and you work together and you create this product and, and working with a living composer is so much more valuable of an experience and so, so cool and so different than, than just playing people's music who aren't around anymore. You can't ask them questions. You can only make inferences. So it's that's a really, really special experience. Yeah. Graduate and undergrad will get the opportunity for that. 
That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Uh, we've asked Robin to, to join us here for a brief moment again to talk a little bit about double majors um, and how that sort of process, the declaration of that happens and when and some of the mechanics. Uh, as we've seen a couple of questions about that. Yeah, so the double major is something a lot of uh, students choose to participate in. We encourage you to get involved on campus in different programs. Um, so if you decide you want to do a double major or um, a minor or anything like that, it's not something that you have to decide right now. Um, we ask students can work with their first year advisor once they're enrolled and decide what program would be best for them. And then we'll work with you to determine your class schedule and figure out your path for the four years to need to take to, to be able to obtain that double major or that minor. And then, um, you know, you also gives you time to explore other classes while you're here with before you declare something so that you can determine whether you really want to pursue that double major or if you just want to take a couple classes on, on the minor level, depending on um, your ability and um, how much time you might have with the program that you're in. Awesome. Thank you for that very much. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of other questions that are coming in here, but I'm going to circle back to some that we had earlier on that we're talking um, specifically to uh, in regards to our vocal studies area. Um, realizing that we actually don't have a choral person here. Um, I feel like I can sub in a little bit on that front. I'm actually a, a graduate of the choral studies, uh, choral conducting program at heart. Um, so I, I feel like I can offer a little bit of insight there. Uh, but for our next, uh, our next session, we'll be sure to have someone from vocal studies here to talk in greater detail. Uh, the Heart School has a series of choirs um, auditioned groups. So you have your choral um, organization uh, auditions at the start of each semester, and you're placed in an ensemble. Uh, there's the Heart Chamber Choir, there's the Heart Choir, um, Chorale, and Camerata. And those organizations uh, rehearse throughout the week. Lots of collaborative opportunities, uh, both within Heart and out. Um, uh, Dr. Edward Bolkovac, who's actually retiring at the end of this year, um, and there's a full search going on for um, for uh, replacement um, for Ed. Um, so there's there's some good excitement built up there. But Ed is uh, is deeply involved in our community around uh, the Heart School uh, in Greater Hartford and New Haven. So there's lots of opportunities to be performing outside the school on that front as well. Uh, we also have a partnership with Opera Connecticut. Doris uh, Lang Kozloff, who is our division director uh, for vocal studies, is also the artistic director for Opera Connecticut. And there's a wonderful collaboration there. So in addition to doing our own opera in-house, there's also operatic performance uh, with, with that organization as well. So lots of great opportunities all the way around. We have a question here about, um, uh, let's see here. We talk about the time spent in studio class throughout the year. And I'm actually going to ask Danielle to answer this because I know the, the, the tuba euphonium tribe uh, has a very special relationship. And, uh, and I think it's one that is representative of most studios inside the heart school. Yeah, so um, in the, the tuba euphonium majors um, at the heart school, there's actually two separate teachers. So there's one tuba teacher and there's one euphonium teacher. So you're getting really specialized instruction um, instead of one doing both, which um, most schools have. So that's really special. Um, but our studios, even though they are technically separate, we work together all the time. And we're invited to each other's studio class, which meets usually the typical instrumental studio is about one or two hours a week, once a week, um, when you get together like all the trumpets or all the clarinets. Um, and then outside of that, there's a lot of groups that have um, larger chamber ensembles. So there's like clarinet ensemble, saxophone ensemble, the tuba euphonium ensemble, trombone choir, uh, trumpet ensemble. Um, and so those groups will meet typically about one to two hours a week outside of the actual studio time. Um, the cool thing is that all of the professors like will allow anyone to come to their studio class. So if I wanted to um, sit in on a saxophone class, because maybe they're talking about um, something about breathing that I think is interesting that week, I could email Professor Kaufman and she'd be like, oh yeah, come sit in. And it's such a friendly and welcoming vibe um, that you can go to in like uh, the trumpet studio in particular, um, Bill Snedeker, he brings in guest artists 
at least once a month, if not more. He brings in guests all the time and he's always updating us and invites the entire brass area to his studio class like every week. Um, so with, with that, we've had the opportunity to work with like, like Joe Burkstaller, who used to play in Canadian brass and like some, some really, really cool people, um, have come through. So between the master classes that these studios set up, the actual studio class itself and the ensembles that form because of it, it's just so many opportunities, um, to just collaborate with your teacher and each other. That's, that's great. Thank you, Danielle. And that's actually uh, another great segue. We have a question about um, how how the Hart School and how our faculty assist with careers and career, not only like career preparation, but actually getting a job. Um, and I find that the network, um, I, I think, of our faculty is actually uh, probably the most important element of that. And uh, I'm wondering. You know, Gabe or Crystal uh, or Tracy, of course, if, if any of you want to weigh in a little bit about the network of faculty and staff and how critical that is to the job placement process. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll chime in on that because it's it's really one of the um, the core tenets of the value of the music production technology program is our close alignment with not just um, uh, the people that we know, but um, uh, institutions that we associate with. Uh, with uh, deeply, uh, the biggest one being the Audio Engineering Society. Um, the Audio Engineering Society is the largest society of audio engineers in the world. Uh, it's something like 12,000 members uh, in every, every part of the globe. Uh, and the great thing about that society is that there are regular conventions, there's regular meetings. Um, uh, I happen to serve uh, as the vice chair of the education committee of that association, so um, I represent all the educational programs in North and uh, uh, South uh, South America, so uh, I work closely with partners from all over the world on things like standards and curriculum teaching and pedagogy uh, for audio specifically. And the the greatest thing is when um, October comes around and uh, we have the large international convention in New York City. We can cancel classes for the week and everyone convenes down in New York. And then it's a question of like, who do you want to meet? Because they're all there. Um, uh, last year, we had Grandmaster Flash come and give a demonstration on um, how he invented turntablism, and my students were all getting like selfie pictures with him after it was over. And and you know it was an amazing thing. He actually demonstrated with a crayon how he invented um, you know the, the foundations of hip hop. Uh, it was amazing. And so you know those sorts of connections are invaluable. I don't know everybody in the industry, uh, but because of our close alignment with that that group, we know everybody by a couple of degrees of separation. Uh, and so students can go and make their own connections. We have a student chapter of AES on campus. So they're regularly inviting uh, guest artists to come uh, to campus and give presentations. Uh, last year, we had Steve Rosenthal come. Uh, it was like a seven time Grammy winning engineer uh, who you know talked about making the last David Bowie record um, and now his work in archival and restoration. Um, we had uh, 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 Frank Filippetti uh, come and talk about what it was like to, to record pretty much all of the last major Broadway musical albums. Uh, and there again is that, that theme of, of crossover. Um, so that's a, uh, yes, it's recording, but it's also music theater related. So for our music theater students to be able to talk to the engineer who's making those you know, famous records uh, is, is really a special thing. So, um, so yeah, uh, the faculty, I want to echo a statement that was made also earlier that the, um, that there really isn't a curtain or a divider between the faculty and the students. Uh, there's an awful lot of what we do professionally. The students are invited to participate. And I don't think the faculty see students as students in the way I think other schools might. I think we see them as, um, pre professional versions of ourselves. And we're all, if we're all at heart, we're all sort of looking at everything the same way. Um, and we're, it's just about sharing. And, and I think faculty at heart are sp special because they learn a lot more maybe than your average faculty member because they're on the ground with students and engaging with them so deeply on what their interests are um, and, and just trying to stay current. Thank you for that. And that, what you just described there, Gabe, is uh, I think is just present in almost every studio and every sort of major degree area. So. Um, you know what, what's happening in the uh, technology area here in our school is 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 exactly the same thing that's happening elsewhere. So um, thank you for the wonderful description. I, I do really appreciate that, Crystal and, and Tracy. Do you have anything you want to add to that? 
Um, you know, on our side, um, in terms of academic studies of music, you know, the, the kinds of conversations that I would I would engage with students on are more like, you know, are you interested in going to grad school for some of these topics? What kinds of programs would you be interested in and in trying to kind of mentor and funnel people in the appropriate directions? Right. Please. I can add a little bit. Um, let me see if I'm, yeah, I'm unmuted. Yes. Um, I do get people come, coming to me to talk about careers. I mean, it tends to be more when they're wanting library and information science careers. And we did indeed have someone who came and spent two hours with me at the last recruitment session back when we were actually still open as a campus. So we are sending people into that profession, but we also have library resources that show where jobs are open and where opportunities for internships are open because it is so important to get the real life experience, not just the degree, but get the soft skills behind the degree as well, the interacting with people, the writing skills, the management, all of that. Um, so we have the books on managing your career, managing others, uh, managing your own self promotion Ocean, especially in social media. We've got all sorts of things to help support what you're doing and then help find the opportunities. Great. Can I tag on one last thing? I just remembered we have a class specifically called Promotional Media and the Performing Artist um, offered by the Music Management Department that's all about how do you promote yourself. Uh, and that's uh, this year being taught by um, uh, 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 an artist manager for BMG. And uh, they're specifically looking at how do we deal with jobs? How do how do you approach people for jobs? How do you think about careers? How do you promote yourself as a performer? And that class is open to anyone at the Hart School, no matter what your major is. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, so the resources abound at Hart, and uh, of course, being connected to a larger university, there are also resources there as well. There's the uh, Center of Career Studio, Career and Professional Development Studio. Uh, and they have a full-time team of four or five uh, career specialists who work to help students hone their documents and otherwise. Now, the arts are, are a bit different, right? And so we deal with portfolios, we deal with presenting ourselves in a, in a bit of a different way, um, but uh, both, both elements are, are important. So there are lots of resources on that front. So we have uh, about 10 minutes left and for any of our attendees again if you have questions that that we haven't answered if you're just enjoying listening and learning a bit more about the hard school that's fine too um, but i do encourage you to drop them in here uh, just so we can get to some of those questions before time uh, time runs out on us uh, before we uh before we dive into another question i think this may be a good opportunity for each of our panelists to just Talk a little bit about um, about why heart. I mean, we're we're here talking about all of these wonderful little elements that make up the heart school. But if you had to put a nice bow on the top of it as a panelist uh, today, and talking to our accepted and in some cases deposited students, um, why why the heart school? I'll let you wrestle to, for who wants to go first, but uh, you know, dive in. <laughs> Dive in and give it. Oh, sorry, Danielle. Did I see you about to take a breath there? No. Okay. I'll buy everybody else a little bit of time to, to think about their moves here. Um, yeah. So this is a question I get. You know, normally we do orientation in person, and I get parents and I get students, and you know, we like to tell everybody, you know, we're your personal librarians. You know, and this is true of the art school in general that people know you. You're not just a number. Um, the people are there giving you the attention, watching for your needs, figuring out what's going to work for this particular student. And it really is one of the best parts of the job. But one of the things I say at the end of my tours, and I let my voice go really low, but not now because I'm on a mic. You know, everybody's going to say all these wonderful things about their school because they want you to be here. And I try to just tell people I've been in a lot of music schools and a lot of institutions, and this school is the real deal. What they say is what you're getting. Um, I do feel like seeing that the students are having a very good experience here dedicated faculty who are putting the time in um, you know we're resourced enough to be able to offer the good opportunities but it is a very personal connection that's it for me i bought you all time well, i don't think that any of us need to answer after that tracy <laughs> no thank you for that tracy that was wonderful Who else want to go next um i'll say that um one of the reasons you might 
you should definitely come here is if you if you really value musicianship if you really value the um the craft and the dedication no matter what you're studying especially of course i'm here representing my area but especially if you're in my area um there are a lot of schools which um offer degrees in music but don't integrate so fully elsewhere uh and um i gotta say it's whether it's dance or theater or music um students who come here to study anything study it really intensely and it's not one of those places that just lip services oh yeah we talk a little bit about the actual craft of making music but everybody who's here is a maker uh and that makes it really special um it's not just something that um you know we we put out there i, I would also say that um you know the there's a lot of schools that will tell you a lot of um big things that like like tracy alluded to um, and of course we're biased. We love the place we work, but that's, that's another thing about it is that, you know, this isn't a thing that we're lip servicing because we're showing, I think, through what we're doing with our students. Uh, when you look at all the collaborations that we're talking about, um, and you look at, uh, the way the students are engaged, uh, globally, we're, you know, it, it's a place that we can come to be ourselves and to invite students to be that way with us. And, uh, there's very few places that are that open um and so if you really care about your artistic craft and you don't want to have that be a second banana to your career uh, but really focus on it then uh, this is a place that i think you're you're really going to thrive thank you gabe for that and there's actually one question just came in uh, just about the first year mpt experience and i I don't know that you have to do it verbally. I think you have access to the Q&A box there, Gabe. If, if you scroll to the bottom, I'm not sure if you have that view or not. Um, but if you click on uh, that question, you can actually type in a little a note there, and it might be a good point of connection on that front. Uh, Crystal, you want to you wanna take it away? Sure. I want to come back to what I was saying at the very beginning about uh, Are passionate. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, can now. I'm sorry. I was I was going to get back to what I was saying about passion and purpose, and that at the hard school you're going to be surrounded by a lot of people who are passionately seeking their purpose as an artist, as a person interested in music, as a person who's interested in music education, really immersing themselves in those things. Um, and I think that at, that creates a certain kind of atmosphere that you want to be a part of. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Yeah, it really does all come back to to what's at the core of it, right? What, are you, what your aspiration is. I mean, college is, is not intended to be a thing that you do, right? It's intended to be a part of who you are and who you are becoming. So thank you for, for bringing that back around. I think that's a really important, um, a really important point. Uh, Danielle. Yeah, so I um, again, like I kind of said in the beginning is just the, the individualized attention with the faculty between the faculty and students and and the fact that you can go to anyone with anything. If you have questions, if you're struggling, not even about academics, if you're struggling like in, in, in life things and any any faculty member that you can go up to is is willing to talk to you and help you through it and help guide you to the, the people you need. And then the students, the connection with between the students, like made so many friends here in the past three years at heart that I, I didn't even imagine that I was gonna make um, just coming in here. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do my graduate degree and that then I'm gonna go home. And I didn't, I stayed. <laughs> you know, I, there's, I've just met so many fantastic people and made so many connections. So the, the people you're gonna meet here at the heart school and beyond is, is gonna be an incredible thing. That's fantastic. Thank you, Danielle, for that. Um, I think that our time is just about up. I, my clock went away. There we go. Um, we've got just a couple of minutes left here. Um, I think at, at this point, we've we've kind of run the gamut of questions. We've tied things up with a bit of a bow. And um, and I know we've had an opportunity to be communicating a few sort of chat questions here off to the side. Um, if you had to, uh, for any of our panelists, if you had to go back to your undergraduate experience and the, the moment right before you walked in the door, what is something that you wish you had known about the school before that time? 
Yeah, it's a pondering question. I know now for the attendees, I didn't I didn't give any of these questions or any of these prompts to the panelists in advance. So, you know, we're working on reflexes here and I, I see a couple of folks have unmuted themselves, which tells me that they're ready to rock. So, uh, Gabe, you want to take it? Well, I'm curious. Did you mean uh, when I was a student? You mean? Yes. OK, what did I wish I knew? Yeah. Um, boy. I, I, well, I remember walking in wishing I knew all the things I didn't know already, uh, and you know that I could I could somehow speed it up. But of course, you can't. I um, I think I, I wish I knew that it was okay to feel nervous. I think I wish I knew it was okay to have questions about whether I'd made the right choice of the school I'd went to, um, and not worry so much about the the rest of it working out. I I think it it. The first semester for me was was learning a lot about what it was to adjust to the new life, of course, as, as a, a somewhat independent, you know, new young adult, um, a fully independent new young adult. Um, but, you know, easing into an education took some time for me. Uh, uh, the place I went to school, uh, the University of North Carolina, Wilmington and their, their jazz program, um, you know, it took a while to, to figure out how to, to hit my stride as a student. It took about a semester to, to adjust. And then, then I really like relaxed into it and it was great because I realized I could be a nerd and it was okay. And people were going to accept me for that. Um, and, uh, you know, I think every student who's graduating, I would give the same advice to, cause I think there, I remember feeling the same thing when I graduated college, ironically it was, oh my gosh, uh, you know, is this going to be okay for me to continue to be the nerd that I am in college? And it's absolutely okay. So I wish I could go back and tell myself that. Um, I'm also glad that no one told me that so I could figure it out for myself because it makes the value that much stronger. Good question. Thanks. True story. Thank you. Who wants to go next? Crystal. Okay. Um, so just two things. Well, there are many things, but I'll say two now. One is that um, College is a time of great kind of emotional development, right? And that there are so many ways in which you will grow through this process that actually are not entirely in the classroom, right? It's being there with your peers, it's going to rehearsals, it's the it's the fullness of the experience that you will grow through, right? And knowing that all of those is uh, the value of time management and in a scenario where you're you know you're in multiple ensembles and then you got your coursework and got to go to office hours da, 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 there's a lot of competing elements there for your time and the sooner that you i know it sounds boring but the sooner that you can kind of hone in on on some skills of time management especially as you look to your peers who might seem like they kind of have it a little bit together of course we all felt like gabe on the inside right that sense of like i don't know what's going on right but looking you know talking to your peers what are they doing right to get their things together making sure you're trying to do your best on that front will make will make for a happy and even experience as you go through a less stress wonderful thank you for that thank you danielle am i good can you hear me all right um yeah i mean basically along the same lines as, as what the previous two have said, I, I wish that someone had told me it's okay to ask questions. It's okay not to know things. It's okay to, to be curious and it's okay to be wrong, you know, and, and that you shouldn't be ashamed of being wrong. I mean, I was one of those students even going through grade school that I was afraid to answer a question in class because I was afraid if I was wrong that I was gonna be looked down on and that's not the case. You know, it's it's okay to to say your answers and say your opinions and say, you know, what you need to, um, and and people will accept you and and it's it's a great experience and and it's it's okay to just be you, and to put yourself out there. Um, that that was one thing that I didn't even figure out until it well into my graduate degree, and I'm still figuring it out. Is just being okay with with putting my music and and what I'm doing out there into the world. I'm still still learning. So <laughs> great. Thank you, Danielle. Tracy. Yeah, okay. So somebody had warned me before college. They said, well, your first year, you spend your whole time realizing how much you don't know. And then you spend your next three years rectifying the problem. And that was basically true. 
And um, but it was so exciting to have it all open up. The first time a music professor played a music in class over the speakers, it was just transformative. The first time I sat in the middle of a large ensemble that I had never been in before, again, it was completely transformative. But so the big thing for me, what I wish I had known, I wish I had known that I was capable of so much. I walked in having no idea what I could accomplish. Um, I realized over my four years, all the different things I was capable of doing that, yeah, actually I am a smart person. I am a talented person. Um, and that's something I would say to you. Um, you were selected for the heart school for a reason. Somebody saw something in you and that's why you're going to be here. And it's going to be really hard. If it's not hard, you're not growing. Um, but we saw something in you and we're here to help you build on that. It's fantastic. Thank you, Tracy, for that. Uh, you you really just uh, essentially, and thank you, took took away my parting um, <laughs> thoughts. No, it's okay. No, it's it's amazing. Uh, but I will just simply say that for all of our attendees, all of these accepted students and deposited students, that uh, I, I hope you have a clearer sense that the faculty across the Hart School, not just in your major instrument area or just in your major degree program. Are here to help you and they understand what it's like to be in your shoes and they understand what it's like uh, to be a young artist and and what sort of aspirations you might have so um, we're, we're here for you and and i want to extend that even further um, to say that this is not the only opportunity for you to ask questions uh, you have all next week before you need to make a deposit decision uh, you know, for May 1st, and in some cases, uh, you know, there's some extension opportunities there um, as well. And uh, we're here to help. We absolutely are. We have virtual resources. You can, you can uh, through our website, check out what the Heart School is up to, uh, some great imagery there and some uh, recordings, et cetera. So uh, contact our office at an office of admission. Um, you can contact your faculty members that you've been in, in touch with already. Just ask, ask the questions. It's best to know now uh, so that you have all the answers you need to make um, the best next decision for you, which I hope will be uh, to come to the University of Hartford's Heart School. So I think that ties up our time today and I hope that we'll be hearing and, and seeing many more of you very soon in the, in the upcoming weeks and months. Um, I wanna thank again, all of our panelists uh, for their time and energy and really exceptional thoughtful answers today um, and responses. Uh, it's so appreciated and a huge thank you to all of our attendees uh, for some great, great questions. So please do keep them coming along. And I, I do just have to take at least 10 seconds to acknowledge the beautiful um, baby that entered our panel discussion a little, little while ago there. Yes, Gabe Herman. Well, thanks again, everybody. Again, congratulations on your acceptance to the University of Hartford and the Hart School. Be sure to be in touch with any other questions. Thanks again, panel. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.